What's up everyone, I'm Callum on Toast and in today's video I'm going to be breaking down my craziest challenge ever and the reason I'm doing this now is because Sylph have just created this new flex challenge uh, on screen you can see it now and basically the idea is to take down a Team Rocket leader with a squad consisting of two 10cp Pokemon and a third Pokemon capped at either 1500, 1000, 500 or 150 CP and then for each challenge that you're able to do you unlock uh, a different tier so if you're able to do the 1500 CP challenge then you'll get a tier 1 badge and if you're able to do the 150 CP challenge then you'll get the tier 4 badge and uh, so this is pretty similar to what I already do so I submitted my craziest challenge and Sylph actually retweeted my uh, tweet and uh, so I gained quite a lot of attention on Twitter for it so I thought now is the perfect time to analyze that challenge and sort of break it down in this video I'm not going to be showing you all my failed attempts because I did not keep them I probably had like well over two three hundred attempts at this challenge and it was mostly based to based on getting the night slash buff twice in a row which was necessary for this challenge but once I was able to do that, then I was able to do the challenge and we're going to go into that now. So actually, I'm just going to mention quickly before we go into the challenge that I had to calculate whether this challenge was possible or not before I tried it. And so I'm going to show you the calculations that I did. So when you let a Pokemon faint and you bring the next Pokemon in, you actually get seven turns before the Pokemon starts attacking. So if you don't know what a turn is, it's uh, basically half a second and each Pokemon has a fast move which lasts a certain amount of turns. And in this case Scyther has Fury Cutter which lasts one turn, so I can hit one fast move for every half second. So when the Pokemon faints and you bring in a new Pokemon, you get seven free turns before they start attacking. And uh, when you throw a charge move, you get five free turns before they start attacking. And then one final bit of information before we go into the video is that their Pokemon, if they're using a 3 or 4 turn fast move, like uh, Waterfall or Confusion, then you can actually get in extra turns. So against Confusion, which is a 4 turn move, you can actually squeeze in 2 more free turns before the damage is applied. And then likewise against Waterfall, you can squeeze in 1 more extra turn and that's all necessary for this challenge and we're gonna show you how how close the challenge was so against the drowsy I switch out or I let the Pokemon faint and then I come in so I can get seven free turns before they start attacking and then the two extra turns because they're using confusion so I get nine turns and Fury Cutter which I'll have it on screen uh, it's a four energy per turn move so I get 4 times 9 energy, which is 36 energy. So I just about have enough to throw a charge move before I switch out. And then as I switch out, the other Pokemon takes the confusion damage. And then it's the same thing again. I come in, I can hit 9 Fury Cutters before I throw a charge move. And at that point I have 72 energy. Now each time I throw a charge move, that's 35 energy. And then with each charge move thrown, I can then hit 7 Fury Cutters before I throw the next charge move. So basically I do 35 energy and then I regain 28 energy each time. And this means I can hit six charge moves and finish with two energy. And uh, so that's how close the challenge was. And uh, yeah, so after that I can then regain more energy. And when their Pokemon is at low health, you can actually finish them off with one extra fast move. So I can finish off the Drowsy with 8 Fury Cutters instead of 7. And if I wanted to, I could finish off the Sharpedo with 7 Fury Cutters instead of 6. And uh, yeah, so with that being said, let's watch the challenge now and try to understand what I just said because I was basically just throwing a lot of numbers at you. So let's just watch the challenge and go through it in normal speed. Okay, so we're entering the battle now. We lead with a 10 CP Wurmple. The Wurmple goes down after a confusion, so we're going to bring in Scyther. 
Uh, watch as my energy reaches the egg scissor. I'm going to switch into the cottony and we tank the charge move or the fast move, sorry, the confusion with cottony. And now we've got two night slashes stored up. We didn't have to charge that at all. They're going to shield. And now we can hit seven fury cutters each time between each charge move. And again, it's not necessary to charge up, but we do it anyway. So now we've got the second attack boost. We're going to hit another seven before we throw the X scissor. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Throw another X scissor. And then throw another X scissor. And now for the final one, we're going to go for Night Slash because it does slightly less damage and we're not going to click any of the bubbles at all because we want to farm down as much of the Drowsy as we can. So here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we got eight through there. And now we're in a really good position. I've done this a few times against Executor and even though Sharpedo only single, is only single weak to bug type moves whereas executor is like double weak to it uh, sharpedo actually takes more damage from the bug type moves because of how low its defense is so i know that three x scissors and a few more fury cutters should ko the sharpedo and because we got the perfect farm down against the drowsy we actually don't need to to undercharge this one we can just play it safe and fully charge it and now we get a little bit of a farm down there, and that's fine. And then the Alakazam coming in, we can hit nine Fury Cutters here. And you'll have noticed that even though Night Slash is technically the better move, doing 50 damage as opposed to X Scissor's 45 damage, we're going for X Scissor because it has Stab, so that same type attack bonus, which I think is 20% but I'm not 100% sure on that. But it basically means x Scissor does slightly more damage than Night Slash f for bug Pokemon. So again, we're just hitting seven Fury Cutters each time and then throwing the charge move. And then one more X scissor here should be fine. And there you have it. That was the craziest challenge I've ever done. And this was my submission for the, uh, damn, I forgot what it was called. The flex challenge. <laughs> Yeah, the Silph Flex Challenge. So that was my submission. So if you enjoyed today's video, if you found it informative, then leave a like, leave a comment letting me know. And I'll probably make more videos like this. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll be doing more in the style where I show my failed attempts or if I'll just run through crazy challenges like this where I actually only still have the successful attempt. Uh, but yeah, let me know in the comments which challenges you want me to walk through next and I will start working on those.